Hello Deep Value community, welcome back. This is my investment strategy laid out part two. Please check out part one. So I'm always fully invested and I'm always buying the cheapest businesses. So why shouldn't I uh, be fully invested? Um, yes, the cheapest businesses, when they're cheap, uh, they can go from being trading at approximately six times free cash flow and they can too compress down the multiple down to let's say two or three times free cash flow but they don't remain priced it like that for very long because if they're high quality businesses in this day and age you're not going to get two or three times free cash flow businesses priced out for very long so i don't like to leave um, any cash on the side because i don't know when the sell-off is going to come I have been hearing since 2014 that the market was expensive, that the sell-off was due. And that would have left me out of the market for approximately six years. Now, when when the sell-off when the sell-off comes, um you 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 you're gonna have difficulty buying at at the at the lowest points. And indeed, if we look back at the Russell 2000 so uh, from the last five years the russell 2000 has now sold off to to lows of five years ago however my portfolio has not revisited lows of five years ago so my point is that buying cheap businesses with enduring competitive advantages really do work well um so in the in the bull market every investor is just after revenue growth and you remember that old adage that uh, revenue is vanity and profit is sanity and cash flow is reality well it it's true buying these businesses with strong stable free cash flow cheaply really does work now everybody seeking that type of business so the game is to buy these type of businesses when others won't. There's no other reason for a business to go on sale apart from other people do not wish to buy it. And why would someone else not want to buy it? Because the outlook is horrible and it has poor visibility. So that's when you get this bargain opportunity. When you buy, when other people do not want to buy. So the way it works best is if you follow over time these businesses and you get to know their pluses and minuses how is that revenue coming in how stable is that revenue so, so you do a lot of hard work over time so when the things hit the fan and they will at some point every business goes through a downturn uh, businesses are very like people they kind of we're, we're mostly okay for most of the time but sometimes we get a little bit ill and so following these businesses and trying to understand their business models really works out well when the businesses go on sale and I believe that uh, it's worthwhile trying to to follow the peers too so that you can understand like uh, for, exa for example I've seen from my own experience that investing in retail is difficult aside from let's say Costco or Walmart it's very very difficult to to buy into that whole sector yes there will be a few pops here and there where you can kind of buy low and sell higher but this is difficult that's a difficult game that's a bit of market timing and that's having a, a bit of luck on your side so i believe that is you're much better off trying to follow and understand a higher quality business and buying that higher quality business when it goes on sale now Higher quality does not mean simply buying the funds. Higher quality can be a small business. It can be a business with, let's say, that the market cap is less than a billion. It can be a small businesses. Higher quality simply means a business that has high returns on invested capital, has quite a sticky uh, business model. So it doesn't mean that you have to go for the well-known household names. Higher quality simply means that has strong free cash flow, strong balance sheet, s stable business. And before we wrap up, please subscribe and so that you can get my next video installment 
and as as always we can grow our value investment community thank you for watching bye